So in this video, I'm going to talk more about Fabry-Perot cavities, and in particular, the lasing modes that they support. Uh, so if you've never heard the term lasing modes, I hope it will be clear what they are by the end of the video. Um, so previously, we analyzed a Fabry-Perot cavity. We said it had a mirror here and a mirror over here. And within the cavity, we had some semiconductor. So we had some semiconductor with some refractive index and some gain. And we saw why these were so cool, uh, because they could build up self-sustaining oscillations. So a Fabry-Pro cavity with some gain is actually an oscillator. Uh, it can oscillate independently of any outside applied field. And we came up with an expression for the output field over the input field. Uh, we just said that was equal to this term, these terms T01, T10, uh, times e to the gain over or gain times length over two and where this gain is defined in terms of the intensity so i as a function of z if this is the z direction is equal to i naught e to the g z and then this expression was divided by one minus r one zero the reflection coefficient on the inside of the material so this is material one and these are both material zero, uh, squared e to the gl. But in deriving the expression, we ignored the phase. Whoop. We ignored the phase of the uh, electric field. And the construct that we're using, the mathematical construct to come up with this, is the plane wave. Uh, so we're sending in some electric field, which is a plane wave of electric field. So it's got... Uh, constant planes of phase and in general we actually have to worry about the phase uh, but it's fairly simple to add on if you've already added this gain term the phase similarly accumulates as you propagate down this uh, down this structure and just as the gain from this end to this end was ge times l or g times l over 2 uh, the total phase is just the wave number inside the material k times the length and the total round trip phase is just 2k times l and so i'm going to call uh, this phase in general phi and let's define phi to just be 2k l so the round trip phase uh, then we need to modify our expression on upstairs it'll look like e to the minus i phi over 2 and downstairs it'll look like e to the minus i phi and let's let's just clean this up a little bit over here and you could have said it was e to the i phi over 2 or e to the i phi uh, just depends on whether you want your plane wave to be uh, omega t minus kz or cosine of kz minus omega t uh, it, it's really a matter of preference so now let's look at this expression that we have and in particular let's look at the denominator so i'm just going to erase I'm going to erase this side. Let's, present, let's pretend that we've divided everything by the numerator. And so all we're worrying about is the denominator now. Um, let's say that you've designed this cavity perfectly so that you get, uh, so that it's a resonant cavity. You're able to get infinite gain. And this term is equal to one. So this term is equal to one. So let's just replace this with one. So this is now one times e to the minus i phi or one over one minus e to the minus i phi and let's let's shift over the one make it make it even prettier this is what your denominator now looks like and this only becomes infinite again when the denominator is equal to zero or when e to the minus i phi e to the i wow that that was that was spectacular uh e to the minus i phi is equal to one or when phi is a multiple of 2 pi, so 2 pi times some integer. And actually, let's make that integer L because we're going to have to deal with the refractive index. Now, you might protest and you might say, well, this is uh, like this is going to be an imaginary quantity or a complex quantity a lot of the times. Uh, so how do we interpret that? Um, and the answer is that this was in terms of the E field. And the E field can be a complex quantity. That just means that it's got a different phase coming out than it had going in. Uh, if we want the intensity or equivalently the number of photons, we just need to take the magnitude squared of this expression. 
and that gives us a physical quantity. So even if the denominator is imaginary or complex, we don't need to worry about that. The, the physical quantities are always going to be real. And so if we substitute phi for what it was originally, just 2kL, uh, 2kL must be equal to 2 pi times some integer. Uh, and we know that k is just related to the wavelength uh, just by the refractive index times 2 pi over the wavelength. So 2 times 2 pi times n over lambda times l has to equal to 2 pi times l. Oh, that's unfortunate. We've got an uppercase and a lowercase l. Uh, but we can cancel the 2 pi's and we can rearrange this equation in terms of the length. So the length has to be equal to now lambda over 2 uh, times 1 over the refractive index times some integer l. And this is also known as the resonance condition. Resonance condition. Now, in practice, l is going to l is typically going to be much much larger than lambda, and so this integer l uh, is going to be very large, maybe in the tens of thousands, for example. So we're often more interested in the not the length that we need to design for, but the wavelengths that we will have resonance for a particular length. And so we can just rearrange this equation. This is just 2 times the refractive index times the length divided by this integer l. And often we want to design these cavities to be a single mode or a single wavelength. And so if we have any nearby wavelengths that are supported by this cavity, that's very bad. Uh, so that can be very bad. And so we're also interested in the spacing between wavelengths, delta lambda, near our design wavelength. Let's call that lambda naught. And so we can figure that out. Uh, delta lambda is just lambda naught uh, minus lambda 1. And so let's say that this here is lambda naught. Uh, and this integer is some L naught. We don't know what it is, but it's going to be an integer. And so just blindly writing out uh, what what the equation for lambda naught is. It's just 2 times n times the length of the cavity divided by L naught. And then our next mode is going to be course is going to correspond to an integer L naught plus 1. So we've got an extra multiple of 2 pi in our cavity. So 2n times L divided by L naught plus 1. And you can multiply and divide each fraction so that you can combine them together and you'll get 2n L divided by L naught times L naught plus one. Now typically L naught is large, so it's, it's much, much greater than one. So we can actually approximate this bottom part as L naught squared. So L naught squared. But we know what L naught is. Uh, it's just defined up here in terms of our design wavelength, which is the important thing that we're, we're worried about as engineers. We don't really care about what this integer is. Uh, and so if you substitute that in terms of the wavelength, you'll get that the wavelength spacing is just equal to your design wavelength squared divided by 2 times n times the length of your cavity. And this is known as the mode spacing. Mode spacing. So if it's too small, if delta lambda, maybe your design wavelength is like, I don't know, 1500 nanometers, for example, and this delta lambda is like, I don't know, 0.01 nanometers, then this might be a problem. You might not be able to distinguish between the multiple wavelengths and your laser won't be, uh, laser won't be very pure. Uh, so it won't be a single wavelength. We, we often want lasers to be a single wavelength because that's often what they're useful for. They're useful as a, uh, as a very coherent, very single wavelength light source. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please uh, give it a like below and subscribe to my channel. Also, if you have any questions or comments, please post those down below and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. And I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.